Hey guys, Urban Combat Survivor here. Uh, I want to do a video here about critters in general. Um, some of it's going to be about your specific critters and pets, and some of it's going to be about foreign critters and pets that don't belong to you or your family. Um, I know a lot of people are putting food away for their pets, and uh, I just wanted to uh, prompt some of you that may not have thought of it to uh, also consider putting away things like frontline because in a breakdown of the rule of law if that occurs then things like fleas and ticks now become a very serious threat to the health of yourself and your family um, fleas are a, a notorious disease vector in places of the world where there isn't a rule of law so diseases anything that bites and break skin to get to your blood fleas mosquitoes lice ticks any of that um they can carry a lot of diseases viruses are very very tiny smaller than a blood cell so uh, a lot of them can carry certain human diseases and pass them along if they bite you um a lot of diseases are opportunistic and don't care what species you are like rabies and anthrax um those things they don't care what you are so, um, be, be aware that uh, veterinary services are also going to be uh, out of pocket. They're not going to be available for you. So, if you haven't taken your pets for their booster shots in X amount of time and you're going to keep pets, then uh, take them and get them done. Put away things to help take care of your pet long term. Um, now, the other side of this is... Um, kind of sad, but uh, it's something that I think needs to be thought about for preparation in case there's a breakdown. So, here we go. Every once in a while, there's a news story about um, animals attacking people. Uh, for instance, there was a news article about a town in Albania where they had to call in the police and hunters, a lot of hunters, because a pack of 200 stray dogs came down out of the mountains and were attacking people. 200. Um, if you look at some of the stuff that went down in Hurricane Katrina was packs of dogs that people had left behind. They Dogs formed packs. It's their instinct. If your family leaves and leaves the dog, they've lost their pack. Eventually, they're going to find a new one. I think there's going to be a lot of dogs, a lot of cats, a lot of animals on the street when people realize they can't feed them, so they're going to let them loose so that they can go survive in the wild. Well, surviving in the wild is going to mean they're going to be forming packs, and they're going to be dangerous. Um, you know, it's already going to be bad enough that if you're able to cook food when other people don't have food, they're going to smell it. Well, people can only smell. I mean, our sniffers are suck compared to a dog's. So a person might be able to smell your food cooking two or three blocks away. A dog can smell it 30 blocks away. And they're going to come because they're hungry. And if they used to be domesticated animals, they have already associated the smell of cooking with them getting a bite. This may become a big danger. I anticipate that it will if there's a breakdown. So not only do you got to wonder... Uh, if you have prepared properly and take care of it if you haven't for your pets know for a fact that other people haven't made provision for their animals they don't have food for more than a week for themselves they haven't done anything for their animals so those animals are going to be turned down on the street in mass numbers larger dogs are going to eat smaller dogs and cats that's what happened in Katrina it's happened it's horrible but there it is nature will find a way and uh, those dogs, they're going to eat something. Make sure it's not your pet. And make sure it's not your kid. And think about... Uh, think about the rules of engagement that you're going to have for animals. Now, I'm going to make a video about rules of engagement that, that need to be considered for people. But for animals... Yeah, that dog that you've seen around the neighborhood for the last 5 or 10 years... You know, Fluffy might be really cute and still might have a collar and a tag on. But Fluffy may also have been infected with rabies. You know, if there's if there's a rabies epidemic now, 
uh, there's just about nothing that will get a local um, government moving faster than a possible outbreak of rabies. Because that shit is dangerous. People can catch that and die from it. Animals can catch it. It's opportunistic. Anything warm-blooded can catch rabies. I'm not sure about cold-blooded. But I wouldn't be surprised. It's a very, very opportunistic virus. So, not only might there be packs of dogs running around that you have to worry about just because they're hungry. Now you have to worry about squirrels, mice, rats, dogs, cats that may have been infected with rabies. Because it takes a single animal with rabies to bite another animal. Once it gets to an animal, one bite, one instance of broken skin and drawn blood transfers the rabies in. Once it gets to an animal that is effective at biting, like a fox or a dog or a raccoon or a cat, then it becomes something that can spread unbelievably quickly. Um, look at Thailand right now. There's a problem on the one island with rabid dogs biting people. People are dying from it over there, and that's with the rule of law relative for, for that country. Um, so consider that. Consider you might not want to let Fluffy get close enough to your house for you to find out if they're okay. I know it's uh, not a pleasant thought, but I think it's a thought we have to have. So, take care of your buddies. The ones that live in your house. Them, uh, you know, whatever companions you have that are human or not. Consider everything for all of them that you can. But everybody outside... All those dogs out there, there's going to be packs. And you got to be ready to fend them off. Urban Combat Survivor, signing off.